Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Not sure when you're watching this, but this is Sean again, and I want to kind of review a little bit about that word prediction we were talking about. I thought I'd set it within context of what we visited about there at the end of last month. Um, and so we are talking, of course, about our students, a lot of the variability that our students have. And we are trying to reinforce, to me, further contextualize with our talk of goals and assessments, particularly for this last activity in January and February, and how it aligns to several frameworks, including those with Universal Design for Learning, which is a planning and redesign, so we can avoid having to create those boxes, make those boxes, and all the extra work that comes along with those boxes. Now, I contextualize it with my own goal, and my own goal was here really a writing goal. Yes, it's demonstrating my knowledge about Greek mythology, but it truly is a writing goal in that I have to write a descriptive essay. I will be measured for that descriptive essay. Now, I haven't shared the rubric for the assessment, but very possibly an element of the assessment would be, of course, the Greek mythology, the content, what I'm looking for, uh, maybe the roles of different gods, things of that nature. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to be half of it, maybe 70% of it, but then there'll be an element of writing. Do I use grammar, mechanics? Uh, did I convey my thoughts appropriately in the writing structure? Did I use punctuation, word choice, things of that nature? And so that will influence potentially the 70% or 50% on the content, but also probably the writing element that I'm assessing as well. So of course here, I'm going to be a little bit more direct and simply, I'm not turning this into a writing exercise. Instead, it's an exercise on my knowledge, or excuse me, the student's knowledge of Greek mythology. And so there's the focus. The focus is not on writing. Instead, the focus is on conveying your knowledge of Greek mythology. Now, some of us may have challenges with that because some of us may say, well, Sean, I'm a fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade teacher. I'm a third grade teacher. Writing is important. And there's elements of writing. There's stages of writing. I'm a science teacher, English language arts teacher, social studies teacher. Um, I need writing something that we need to develop and work on. So fine that they're demonstrating it. And fine, you can use a poster or a movie or something like that. But I also want to focus in on writing. So to me, I brought then word prediction. And to me, word prediction, I want to be as clear here as I can. Word prediction to me helps with elements of overall writing, but also the six traits. And so fluency, it is going to assist me with the listing of words and the selection of words, the prompting of listing of words, my audio output of listing of words, and everything that goes along with it. It will help me with sentence fluency. It will help me with the quantity of, of words I, I produce. It, it, no question it will. The research shows it, uh, and this has been going on for decades. But it will help me with my voice. Why? Because, of course, my words that I'm trying to get down to, and actually my word choice can kind of combine with voice, uh, will be assisted. It will be assisted basically uh, on my word, uh, word list that I could potentially select from. It will be uh, selected based on words I'm regularly using, so it's going to prompt me with that, and the list goes on. And, of course, the presentation of what I provide, the actual words on paper, it will help with there as well, based on the fluency and quantity we talked about earlier. So with that in mind, let's kind of go back to word prediction. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. And I just want to kind of review this. This is co-writer. Now, the reason I like co-writer, folks, is because of the features it offers. Now, in addition to this video, I'm going to give you uh, a list, uh, a link of at least a uh, you know, half dozen or so different apps that offer word prediction. And as I mentioned, these will be for writing purposes because there's a number of word prediction apps out there, including the text on our actual phones, that may be not necessarily aligned with, oh, this is for writing per se. No, it's more basic, you know, like texting. It's for texting. Um, it may be the fact that I have a storybook and I'm trying to create elements of a storybook. Well, there's word prediction. Yeah, but is it really a writing or is it storybook? You know, where this is blank sheet of paper I'm trying to write. And so with that focus, I'm going to try to focus it on apps that are writing, co that writing word prediction versus a app that does storybooks or some other element. And by the way, it happens to have word prediction. And as I mentioned in our conversation um, where we were face-to-face, um, -face, at least remotely, um, more and more word prediction is being integrated in because a lot of our learners can use it, including ourselves. It saves us time. It, like I said, fluency. It helps us with the quantity of what we write, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go out and, and, and reinforce what we already know, and that is, of course, if I start typing the letter T. T. It's not going to come up with trouble. It's not going to come up with tree. It's not going to come up with words that would be in the middle of a sentence. It's going to be with words that begin with the letter T at the beginning of a sentence. And so, again, I can select from any one of these. B, B, this, that, 
they. Now, one of the things I did mention is I could change the voice. Right now, it's a male voice. It might be Alex, but I could change it to Kathy and a variety of others. There, too. Now, as I also mentioned, the fact that I can simply type in the. E. And then e. I'll simply go to my next list of words. And thing, so. Thing. Follow. Person. So, of course, now I can actually select from. So let's go ahead and let's go with. Um, uh, the first thing we wrote. So let's go with the first. So now I can simply select first the word. Is first thing. So let's go with thing. Well, there's thing right there. Thing. Thing. So now I can actually select the number four. So thing. Uh, we. So let's go ahead and type in we. And notice we just went from number seven to number one. So I'll go ahead and select we that. Need. We wrote. So let's go with W R. And there it is, number two. Wrote. Wrote. So I'm going to simply type it out. The rest of it. E. Wrote. Uh, the first thing we wrote, A. Um, e. let's say included, included, A. and so there's including. including. Yeah, there's include. include. Okay, so now I have a, 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 a sense of what it's going to be D. in terms of, ooh, what happened there? So e. there we go. I included. Okay. D. The first thing in, we included. In, in, in now, that's interesting. In, it didn't in, come out with that full word, but maybe. My grammar is not the best here. The first thing we we wrote included um, a picture. A, I don't know. It doesn't make a, sense. Let's go in number picture. of picturesque. A picture. P uh, picture. P pictorial. A picture. A picture. Oops. And then because you, you can see I missed. There we go. A picture. P the, the first thing we wrote included a picture. Now, again, I'm not sure if that makes sense. Um, but you can see as I started typing, different words popped up, and they're going to be supportive of me as I go along. Now, I could have, as I described earlier, simply start with, let's go, uh, the boy. B. So let's go with boy. B-O. Oh. The boy oh. is went, went to, went to, to the, and let's go movies. with store. Stores. Store. There Sto you go. And. So in that e, instance, what you have e, is me actually using the e, list she, uh, and my prompts, my numbers, to be able to, I think I typed five words, excuse me, five letters, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six words. So a couple different uh, kind of reviews here. My list is going to change as I type my letters. My list is going to offer me the words that I can go down and listen to. I, he, so I can actually select, I can select the number or the word. And, uh, of course, as I type, it will actually say the words I type it as well. So all those are good things. Now, as we mentioned in earlier, so let's move this down. As we mentioned earlier, there are word lists we can select. So, for example, I can select Ancient Egypt, as I think I offered in my example. But we can search topics. So let's search topics about, um, well, let's see what we find in Charlotte's Web. So Charlotte's, there you go, Charlotte's Web. So we'll select Charlotte's Web. They're creating a topic. There we go. And so let's go ahead and see if something comes up with Wilbur. The P, P, pig, P, so we'll put in P. And notice, pig. folks, pig pops up as number two. Um, I'm not sure if it would have popped up as number two if we didn't have Charlotte's Web on. I pretty much can guess it would not. So the pig, pig was, was let's go named, named. Uh, not there yet. So named, um, there we go. Took me three letters. Named. Named Four. Wilbur. So let's see if we can type in W. w. And we're going to come up with Wilbur? Not yet. So let's go with W I. I. There we go. There's Wilbur number Wilbur. five. Ba okay. A. And then this. maybe we go up with Spider. So let's go V. There. And let's see if we can that, find that. Um, the H. Spider. So this is the next. Spider. Let's put an S. P. There we go. Spider, spider comes up as number three. So that's indicative of the fact that in our library, we have Charlotte's Web turned on. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's close it out. Let's go ahead and notice, folks, Spider just came off our list. Same. Spider just went from Stuff. number three to off our list. So this is indicative of the fact that we went up under the library. And up under the library, we are actually selecting terms. We found a term for Charlotte's Web. And we added those, actually, terms for Charlotte's Web. And we added them. We can turn them on or off. And by the way, we can also add our own word list. So, for example, we start adding a topic list. So let's go ahead with uh, presidents, for example. Let's see what comes up with presidents. So here we go. We have U.S. president elections, U.S. presidents, 
Great Depression, but also we could create web scraped. Uh, so what they're doing is they're grabbing terms off a of web to make the collection, okay? So presence of India, etc. Or we could actually add our own word list. So these would be existing ones. These would be ones they're putting together. Or we could create our own, which of course might be relevant to like our local history or whatever we're doing for our unit. So with that, we have our word lists. Okay, we can add here. We have our words. Story of. And we have a variety of other things that are going on for our selection purposes. So that's a brief overview of word prediction from what we talked about earlier. It's got a lot more from what we talked about, but that's a good start. It connects with our fluency, our voice, uh, all the other elements that we discussed um, earlier in our little overview PowerPoint presentation. And then again, I'm gonna offer a list of four or five, six other word prediction apps, resources, that are either low cost or for free. And as I close out, what I want to Sign. emphasize, what I want to emphasize is by selecting CoWriter Universal, by selecting CoWriter Universal here, okay? And I selected CoWriter Universal here off the Chrome app. But by selecting CoWriter Universal, not all word prediction apps or supports are equal. I want to reinforce that. So just because you find another word prediction, oh, it's free, and you start looking for all the different options like the word list with the numbers, the audio output, uh, the word list that you can add in from the library. Oh, wait, it has this, but it doesn't have that. That's an element of the fact that am I paying for free or am, or am I paying for it? Um, and also the fact that CoWriter really is the Cadillac out there. There are some Chevys and some Buicks, but it's the Cadillac. It's been out there the longest, and they've probably done the most development on it. Hope this helped. I uh, just want to make a few connections and um, have a good rest of the day or morning or evening, wherever you're like.